Hello everyone, my name is Aria Nova and today I'm going to teach you how to use CSS3 Flexbox. So what is Flexbox? It's a new layout mode in CSS3 and it provides an efficient way to arrange items in a container even when their size is unknown or dynamic. Um, and the defining aspect of Flexbox is that a flex container has the ability to alter the size of flex items within it. Um, and it, so it can expand each item size um, to fill up um, available space and it can also shrink them to prevent overflow. Unlike block floats where the order in which you put different children divs in your code is in the order it's going to be positioned in your layout, a flex box can actually alter the order of its items. So this makes it easy to alter your layout when accommodating different display sizes using media queries. Um, and this also ensures that elements of a page layout behaves predictably. So let's go over some basic Flexbox vocabulary. Um, a Flexbox consists of, you have a Flex container and then Flex items as its children. And an important term to know here is the main axis, which is the axis along which the Flex items are going to be aligned. aligned. So unlike blocks and inline, um, which are only oriented in one way, you can change what direction you want the main axis to be in. So unlike the picture in the last, last slide here, the main axis is in the default mode, which is horizontally. So now let's go over some properties and how to get started using Flexbox. To set up Flexbox, you basically set display to flex. And here we have flex flow, which consists of two things. Here, the flex direction and flex wrap. So flex direction is how you set the main axis. And for flex wrap, if you set it to wrap, um, the container will carry over flex items to the next line when the line exceeds the size and if you put it to no wrap, then the flex container will shrink items to fit in one line. So here we have some alignment properties. Um, justify content will um, align them along the main axis and align item will deal with the cross axis. Okay, so let's just go over some examples so you can see better what I mean. Um, so when it, items do not use up all available space container, if you set justify content to flex start, it will be positioned here in the start of the axis, and else it will be positioned at the end for flex end, and for flex center, it will just be centered, which is pretty sta straightforward. But here are the more unique and useful ones for flex box. If you set justify content to space between it will evenly space out the items within a line. So this makes it really easy to make uh, grids and columns. And here's an example of using align items. So with justify items, we were aligning them along the horizontal axis. And now we're setting the vertical axis. So for here, you can create columns of equal lengths despite the item, the elements having different content lengths. Um, and you simply do this by doing a line items stretch. And here's also an example of how you can do perfect centering with just three lines in flex box. In the flex container, you say that it's a flex, and then you just set justify content and align items to center. So flex, each flex item within a flex box also has its own set of properties. Align self will override the default align items. And also you have flex. Um, the flex property sets the growth and shrink factors for an item it specifies. So it sets the item length relative to the rest. So for example, for flex grow up top here, they all have the same growth factor. So they all take up the same amount of space, but over here, number two um, has a flex grow of three, so it will take up three times the amount of space. 
and flex basis can set the initial main size of the flex item. So for here, for number four, you can just set the width to whatever you want. Okay, so here's the really important property order. So you can just put an integer that specifies the order in which the children of a flex container will appear. And this is helpful for responsive design. And I'm going to show you by implementing this holy grain grail layout, which will consist of a nav, nav bar in the side, the article in the middle, and then an aside on the right side of the article. And notice here in the source code, it's not in the order that we want, but we can fix that easily with flex. By here, notice for the article, we just set it to two, um, the nav set it to one, aside to three, and so it appears in that order. Um, flex flow, the first one is the row, so it's in a row, and you don't see unwrap here, but that's the default, so that's so it'll automatically make them fit into one row. Um, here's how you change it to fit a smaller screen, screen size, like for, mo um, for mobile. You just change the flex direction to column, and then over here we're setting all the order to zero, so it's just how they, automatic, it, how they appear in the document. So the only cons of Flexbox is browser compatibility. There was um, a syntax change. Um, but that's like over here, you can see rec now to set it up, you have to do display flex. But in older versions, um, it was Flexbox. So obviously, that can mess up your code. But you can get, you can get around this pretty easily by using prefixes. And so for, for prefixes, you can use auto prefixer or SAS mixins. The recommended one to use is auto auto prefixer, so it's a post-CSS plugin to parse CSS and vendor prefixes. So here's an example of using auto prefixer. All you'd have to do is um, you have to specify the browser versions you want, and over here it'll automatically add the vendor prefixes that's needed. So this is an example of how like if you wanted to do it with SAS. So the first one is for if you wanted to work for old iOS and Safari, and this is for Internet Explorer, but uh, yeah. OK, so in conclusion, um, the best thing about Flexbox and why you should use Flexbox, the parent can alter the size and order of its children. So positioning of the elements is simpler and more complex. You can make more complex layouts with less code, and which leads to a simple development process. So these are just guides. You have MDN, and then these two guides over here have really nice visual guides for each property and their settings, because there's a lot. Um, more stuff about browser compatibility and how to write your mixins and stuff. And then here, where you can play around and really see what each property does. And this one's really cool, because it's like a tower game, defense tower game. So, OK, thank you.